So remember, the LIFO reserve account is used when we're going from a non-LIFO to LIFO. So it is, um, it is used by companies that do not want to record their day-to-day -day, their day -to -day activities in LIFO um, during the period, but then want to reap the benefit of a LIFO reporting for tax purposes. And I don't need to go deep into that because we did before. Um, you know, I'm just going to work through this like couple of examples real quick. Like suppose a new company, and, and the new company part is, is pretty significant because one of the things about the LIFO reserve is that it is a real account. It is a contra asset to the inventory account. So it reduces um, the balance that I report for the inventory account, right? Remember that contra and adjunct and assets, their sole purpose is to merge with their parent account in a ledger to be reported on a financial statement. We've seen this with a couple of, you know, more than a couple at this point, we've seen this with the allowance for doubtful accounts. It reduces the balance of our accounts receivable ledger account and reports accounts receivable at that reduced amount on the balance sheet. We've seen it with uh, the allowance for sales returns similarly reduces accounts receivable when we're reporting it on the balance sheet. Um, you know, we've talked briefly about some contra and adjunct accounts under the periodic system. So all of those things are just ways of keeping information in separate accounts in a ledger, but then combining them to be reported on the financial statements. So this is a contra inventory account. It reduces the value of inventory from its non-LIFO basis to its LIFO basis. So it's a new company. And since it's new, what that indicates to me is that if it's new, the LIFO reserve has no balance at the beginning of the period. Otherwise, you know, you can't assume that there's a zero dollar balance in the LIFO reserve account because the only accounts that we can assume are a zero balance at the beginning of a period are our nominal accounts, the temporary accounts that we close all the time. And those are basically our income statement accounts, expenses, revenues, gains, and losses. And there also are certain accounts that are closed, purchase discounts, purchase returns, freight, and purchases that we learned of in chapter eight. But we start with a zero balance. It is a real account, but only because we have a new company. And it says that the Indian inventory was 50,000 on FIFO, but 40,000 on a LIFO. What is the journal entry to put it into a LIFO basis? Well, if the inventory account at the time that we're wanting to report is on the non-LIFO basis, right? So it has 50,000 because we're using that FIFO, which is our non-LIFO, uh, but we're wanting to report $40,000 on the LIFO. When we're doing this, remember, and this is the important part of the narrative is that what companies are wanting to do is report on the balance sheet, their inventory at LIFO levels because then they can use it for their taxable uh, income. Remember that LIFO has a very specific rule called the LIFO conformity that forces companies, if they elect to use LIFO for tax purposes, then they are forced to report um, their, their financial reporting is forced to um, be identical to their tax reporting in this one rare circumstance. So they want to report $40,000 on the balance sheet. And that's where I think, you know, people tend to have a struggle is, is I'll take away some of the like, I'll take away some of the verbiage. I'll just say, you know, the company has a life of reserve, their inventory accounts at a certain amount. This is their balance sheet. And then I've had students come up to me during the test and they're saying, and they ask, well, can you tell me which one is LIFO? And I'm like, no, I can't because that's part of the question is understanding that LIFO reserves take an inventory account that is a ledger account 
that is kept in non-LIFO and make it LIFO on the balance sheet. So if we're going from 50 to 40, then in order to make that transition, we need to reduce the 50 by 10 in the contra account. And if we reduce the 50 by 10, then yeah, we get the 40. So now we have our balance, right? Well, what do we need to do to get that balance? We need to credit the LIFO reserve by $10,000. And that credit is achieved by making an adjusting entry. So the adjusting entry that we would make at the end of the period in order to convert our inventory to a LIFO amount would be to debit cost of goods sold by 10,000 and credit the LIFO reserved by that amount as well. This is, um, we've seen it with accounts receivable. This idea that we know what we want to end up with and then what we're solving for is what amount do we have to adjust by in order to get the amount that we desire? And that's going to become a repeating theme, um, you know, as you work your way through the course and also as you work into intermediate two is that we use something called the asset liability approach where we value an account balance and then we find the income statement amount that would have to be uh, adjusted in order to get to that asset balance. In this case, it is a contra asset, but it's still an asset. It's still reducing my overall assets. Um, and that's gonna be something you're gonna see more and more uh, in different and more complex situations. So make sure that you understand that I'm solving for the balance, not for the adjustment. In this case, they are the same, but only because we began with a $0 balance. So let's look at what happens at the end of the next year. The Indian inventory is 55 on a FIFO basis, but 42 on LIFO basis. In that case, then we have this inventory account at the beginning of the year, it was 50 because that's where we ended up in the year before, right? We're just working forward a year. We're pulling everything forward. Um, and now we're ending at 55,000. And it doesn't really matter what happened during the year. Of course, we have some you know, movement in this account, the net movement of inventory in and out of the business. The life of reserves similarly would start at 10,000 because it is a real account. We don't close it. And now we have to decide, well, where do we want to end? And the way we're gonna figure out where we want to end is by again assessing, well, what do I have to reduce this 55 by in order to get to an amount on the balance sheet that I want to express? I want to express the balance sheet in LIFO because that's the whole point of my LIFO reserve. If the balance sheet says that my inventory is at 42,000 by LIFO count, by a LIFO assignment of value to the ending inventory, then that means I need to reduce this 55,000 by a certain amount to get to the 42. And then I do the simple math. Oh, I need 13,000 here. And if I have 13,000 here, that means that the missing amount that I need to charge to cost of goods sold is 3,000 that's going to be the amount I need to adjust for, which creates that journal entry, debit cost of goods sold, credit life or reserve. And as I mentioned, it doesn't always have to be a debit to cost of goods sold and a credit to life or reserve. It could be like, for example, I started at 10 and now I only need seven, right? As my end balance. Well, in that case, I need a $3,000 debit in order to get it from 10 down to seven. In that case, I debit the life of reserve. The credit is to cost a good sold. All that's happening there is that the difference between the two systems is re being reduced. That could occur through the trend of purchases and sales during the period. That could occur because inventory costs 
aren't actually falling for a certain amount of time during the period, but it's definitely something that could occur. So you have to be a little bit, um, you have to be a little bit flexible when you're dealing with um, this entry and, and many of the adjusting entries. Many adjusting entries can go both ways where we're actually crediting an expense um, instead of debiting it and vice versa for revenues. And, and it's good to know, like what are the conditions under which I would have a credit, uh, I'm sorry, a debit to the life of reserve rather than a credit and, and to think it through, like what does that mean economically speaking? Well, it means basically that the difference between LIFO and FIFO inventories is re being reduced over time. The, the, the amount that I assign as a dollar value to my ending inventory under LIFO versus FIFO is now reduced. Well, what could make that happen? One thing that can make that happen is if inventory costs didn't increase as much over time. In fact, even if they just, they don't even have to decrease, they just have to increase at a decreasing amount and we'd still maybe have a debit to my life of reserve. Um, and then one more example of this, uh, it's a multiple choice here. It says that they, we have some footnote disclosures from QVTV using FIFO periodic cost of goods sold was 22 billion. Ending inventory was 2.1 billion. The balance of the LIFO reserve account at the beginning of the year was a credit balance of 0.6 billion. By the end of the year, it had increased to a credit balance of 0.8 million. How much is, in, is ending inventory under a LIFO cost assumption given this information at year end. So I, I would just work out some T accounts. We got, you know, the cost of goods sold doesn't fit into a T account quite as well. Usually assets and liabilities are things you wanna make T accounts with. So we got Indian inventory of 2.1 billion. And The balance in the life of reserve account at the beginning of the year was a credit balance of 0.6 billion. By the end of the year, it had increased to a balance of 0.8 billion. How much is Indian inventory under a LIFO cost assumption given this information? So this actually you know, has some extra information in it, right? We don't need everything that I'm giving you. Like, for example, you could start solving for, oh, I know that the adjustment would be 0.2 billion cost of goods sold uh, has to increase when I go from FIFO to LIFO because this is the journal entry I would need to make that we just saw. And if cost of goods sold is increasing, it's being debited by 0.2 billion and being adjusted upward, as I switch over into LIFO, then that's going to add to the cost of goods sold under FIFO. So my LIFO cost of goods sold would be the 22 billion plus the 0.2 billion. And that's great, but you know that's not the question that was asked, right? Um, what I asked is how much is Indian inventory under the LIFO cost assumption? And all we have to do for that is understand that if inventory under this is the FIFO balance, then I'm wanting to report in LIFO terms. I take that, subtract its ending balance here, and the answer is just 1.5. 